This is one of those lovely problems where we get the chance to use the integrated rate law. Now please remember that there are two different integrated rate law equations. One for first order reactions and one for second order reactions. Uh, there are actually a lot more integrated rate law equations that you can find and derive and determine experimentally if you want for more complicated reactions. But for you, my students, I will only require you to be able to know how to use these two integrated rate laws, the first order and the simple second order. And I will give those equations to you on the exam, but I will not show you how to use them on the exam, obviously. You'll have to know how to do it. So here's how we do it. For this example right here, it tells us a very simple reaction, A converting to B, and it tells us furthermore that this reaction is first order with respect to A. Now that might sound obvious by looking at it, but it's not always true. In fact, oftentimes our reactions that look as simple as this can be second order or third order with respect to A. For example, if you had a reaction that was second order with respect to A, it means that if you doubled the concentration of A, it would, quad would, quad would quadruple the rate of the reaction. If it were uh, a third order with respect to A, it means that if you uh, doubled the concentration of A, it would, it would eight-tuple the uh, rate of the reaction. Anyway, that kind of thing totally can happen, but that is not what's going on here. It tells us straight up that it's a first-order reaction, which means that the integrated rate law for a first-order reaction <clears throat> is this. See, I don't have it memorized either, and I don't expect you to memorize it. <clears throat> it then asks us to determine what K is. So here's K. That I don't know. What in the world uh, is it? And how do I figure that out? Well, in order to determine what k is, what I can do is I can take this data and throw in the numbers for any time t, and it should work. It honestly doesn't matter which of these times t you pick, you should get the same answer. I'm going to go ahead and pick t equals 10, but you can pick a different one and see if it gives you the same answer. Hopefully it actually does. So at t equals 10, what is the concentration of a? The concentration is 0.1. So down here, this, this term right here is the concentration of A at time t. So when t equals 10, the concentration is 0.1. So I'm going to type, or throw in the ln of 0.1. You good so far? K is what I'm trying to solve for, so I'm going to put negative K here. What is the t? Well, t is going to be 10 seconds right there. Okay? Now, what does ln of A sub 0 mean? Well, A sub 0 is the concentration of A at time 0. What is the concentration of A at time 0? It's 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 0.20. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so this is pretty much it. You can throw in all of these values into your calculator. Determine what the ln of 0.1 is. It should spit out a number. Determine what the ln of 0.2 is. Spit out a number. And then use algebra to get k on one side and everything else on the other. If you do that all right, then hip hop hooray, you should get the correct answer. I'll let you do that on your own.